sorry everyone, the White House is closing for the day. Please come back tomorrow. The Golden Gun will be on display all week. <laughs> You're taking candy from a baby. Yeah. <laughs> now where did that horse go? Scarlett, how was your weekend? It was wonderful. Agent Smith escorted me to the theater. He is such a gentleman. We had such a wonderful time. Oh, that's wonderful. I wish I could say the same. My relationship with Sam just isn't working out. Can you meet me for lunch? I really need somebody to talk to. Of course, Miss Annie. We'll meet at the Corner Cafe, and you must tell me everything. I will. The president just walked in, look busy. Mr. President, sir, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit? You know perfectly well why I'm here today, Director Bale. What's the status on recovering the Golden Gun? Mr. President, we have every available resource working on this. Our leads tell us and indicate that it's work of that low down, no good, Cow tipping, cat kicking, bad bark. Just as soon as we know anything, sir, you'll be the first to know. I cannot express enough the importance of recovering that rifle. It is my prized possession, a personal gift from Oliver Winchester and a national treasure. I completely understand, sir. Tell your people thank you for the hard work and service to their country. I do have confidence in you and your staff. Thank you so very much, sir. I'll pass that along. Good day, Director Bale. Good day, sir. Sir, here's all the information I could find on Bad Bart. Oh my. This Bad Bart is bad with a capital B. It's even worse than that, sir. He's even been known to steal candy from a baby. Right. Sir. This just came in over the wire. Hey, Miss Scarlett. Snap out of it, Smith. The wire, what is it? Well, it's a long metal string-like thing, sir, but that's not what's important. What is important is that our agent in Colorado just informed us that there's a long-range shooting competition being held out in Deadwood, South Dakota. Agent Smith. You know I don't have time to shoot anymore. No, you don't understand, sir. The entry fee for this shooting competition is $25,000 per person, and first prize is the golden gun. This has to be the work of Bad Bart. Do we have any agents in the area? Only Agent Jones and Bad Bart would recognize him in a second. The territory out there is pretty lawless. Bad Bart rules with an iron fist. You know, I doubt seriously if a posse of Texas Rangers could even fight their way into a place like that. I've got an idea, sir. Send me. I know I could win that competition. But you're not a trained agent. And besides, it would be extremely dangerous. I'm willing to take that chance, sir. I'll take my friend Miss Annie with me. Bad Bart will never suspect who we are. Very well. But I'm sending Agent Smith along with you. Agent Smith, 
Do you think you can watch Miss Scarlet's back? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I've got to love this job. It's good to be the boss. When I say hop, they say how high. Hey, boss. Oh! Ha 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 ha! Easier than taking candy from a baby. My plan is brilliant as usual. Boss, why do we take candy from babies? And uh, I'm sorry, what was your plan again? Shorty, you got to pay attention. You know we don't give candy to babies. Now, I've got the golden gun. The president's going to want the golden gun back. There's a lot of foreign countries that would like to get it just to embarrass the president. Boss, can I have some candy? Sure, but watch the slobber. Now, I've set up a competition to bring all the interested parties here to compete for the golden gun. What they don't know is I've hired the best shooter in the world. He's an Australian guy and can hit a bucket freehand from over 800 yards. Wow, honestly, boss? Shorty, you know you shouldn't say the H word. That's one of our no-no words. Sorry, boss, but what if he doesn't win? Oh, he'll win all right and we'll give him his cut, but we'll have the golden gun and a pile of money. Now, here's where my plan is beyond brilliant. I'll return the golden gun to the president in exchange for a full party. Then I'll be able to travel the world in style promoting my new book, Crime Sprees for Dummies. Now, Shorty, you don't reach my lofty level of lawlessness without some book smarts. Now, we're going to have a lot of guests coming in over the next few days. Assemble the men. Yes, sir, boss. Are we ever going to get there? Patience, ladies. Driver says we'll be there by about noon tomorrow. I can't wait to check into a nice hotel. I'm not expecting five stars. I'll just be glad to get off of the stagecoach. Now, the stagecoach driver told me that there were several people in town that were going to be willing to help us. The sheriff, of course. There's a saloon owner by the name of Miss Pearl and Miss Kathy, who owns the local cafe. Great. We'll contact them when we get there and fill them in. Now, let's go over our plan one more time. Oh look, there's Miss Kathy now. Good. We'll catch up with her and fill her in as soon as we get checked into our hotel. Morning, Miss Kathy. Morning to you, sir. Cow casserole. Mm. Good. I'll be back for supper. I sure would like to try some of that cow casserole. All right, I'll head on down and talk to the sheriff. Then I'll swing by and see Miss Pearl at the saloon. Remember, ladies, we cannot let on that we know each other. But if you need me, I'll be close by. Last stop, Deadwood, South Dakota. Well, I know why they call this place Deadwood. What's the deal with that bullet? 100% solid silver. How come? You heard about Abraham Lincoln, didn't you? No. Vampire Slayer. Oh, oh my, my, my. Right. J look who just arrived on the noon stage. I must go introduce myself. Welcome to Deadwood, ladies. Let me introduce myself. I'm Bad Bart, and this is my assistant, Shorty. And you are? I'm Miss Scarlett, and this is my best friend and assistant, Miss Annie. Hello. Well, are you here to watch the gun competition or just to beautify this part of the West? 
Well, neither actually. I'm here to enter the competition. That is, if you allow women to compete. Oh, uh, of course we wouldn't not allow you to enter the competition. Uh, that is, if you have the entry fee, of course. Well, I do, and we'll be by your office in the morning. Well, that'll be great. Looking forward to it. I'll have Shorty help you with the bags and follow me to the hotel, and we'll secure your accommodations. Thank you. Thank you, Shorty. As you can see, we travel light. I do, ma'am. I'm looking for the owner of this fine establishment, of Miss Pearl, I believe. I'm Miss Pearl. And you are? Uh, John Smith. I'm in town for the shooting competition, and the stagecoach driver told me that you had a room in the back that you rented from time to time. Is that available? Yes, it is. It's not fancy, but it's clean. I'm one of the few businesses in town that hasn't been taken over by Bad Bart. He's stolen just about every business in town. You know, I've heard a lot about Bad Bart and his lack of respect for the law. It seems that the only law in this town is his law. I believe that even the United States government is powerless to stop him. Can I trust you, Miss Pearl? Honey, I'm one of the only people in this town you can trust. Well, I'm an agent with the U.S. government, and I'm here with a couple of more agents. And we're here to take Bad Bart down. And we've devised a plan to do that, but I'm going to need your help. You can count on me, Mr. Smith. Here's what we're going to do. Squatted on your spurs. Oh, that's that's your trouble. We are, uh, Mr. Barr, I presume. And you must be Kangaroo Jim. That's right. And I'm here to represent you in this competition. Well, this is my main man, Shorty. He'll be taking you to your hotel to see to your accommodations. Now, you remember our bargain. If you don't win, you get absolutely nothing. Don't worry, I'll win. And when I do, you better have my money ready. If it wasn't for some friends that needed the money, I wouldn't even associate with you. You don't have to like me, Kangaroo Jim. You just keep to your end of the bargain. Now, Kangaroo Jim, where does that name come from? Because you don't sound Australian. Well, I'm not Australian, and I don't know why they call me that. Good day, Mr. Bart. Don't just stand there, shorty. Hop to it. Well, if you say so, boss. Hello, ladies. I'm Miss Pearl. This is my establishment. Hello, I'm Miss Scarlett, and this is my friend, Miss Annie. How do you do? And we're in town for the shooting competition. That's wonderful. May we have a menu and perhaps a wine list? Well, this is what we have to drink in this establishment. Whiskey and more whiskey. Would you like whiskey? I think we'll have whiskey. And whatever your today special is. Great choice, ladies. And may I say I was thrilled to see that a lady is in the competition tomorrow. I wish you good luck. Thank you. I have a feeling I'll need a little lady luck. Hey, who's that uh, good looking cowboy over there? Oh, that's Kangaroo Jim. He's the reigning world champion and he's favored to win the competition tomorrow. Hmm. Maybe we could get him to come over here and share our table. That would be great. He's a really nice fellow. Let me see if I can get him to come over. Oh, Kangaroo Jim. I have some new friends I'd like for you to meet. Wonderful. This is Miss Scarlett. Miss Scarlett, nice to meet you. Kangaroo Jim. This is Miss Annie. Miss Annie, nice to meet you. Miss Scarlett's in the competition tomorrow. I'm going to leave the three of you together while I get the ladies' whiskeys. I'll be back. Would you like to share a table with us, Kangaroo Jim? I don't mind if I do, ladies. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, they call me Kangaroo Jim, but I'm not from Australia. 
What a coincidence. We're not from Australia either. Good morning, ladies. I assume your accommodations were satisfactory? Satisfactory would be the appropriate description, Mr. Bart, but really we were quite comfortable. Annie, would you give Mr. Bart our entry fee for the contest, please? Why, thank you. Now, I know all the other shooters and who hired them, but you two are a mystery to me. Let's just say that we're avid gun collectors and we're interested in owning the golden gun. May I inspect it to ensure that it's the genuine article? Help yourself. I assure you, it's real. Yes, it is real. And I'm looking forward to owning it myself. Patience, Miss Scarlett. You'll have your shot at it in the morning. We get started early. We shall be there bright and early. Good day, Mr. Bart. Good day, ladies. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for traveling such a long distance to be a part of this competition. You know what's at stake here? A chance to win the Golden Gun! Ooh. Now, we've asked the Honorable Johnny McGraw to officiate this competition. He's a former world champion long distance shooter. Johnny. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will be using standard long-range rules and targets. In case of a dispute, I will be the final judge. I assure you, the competition is completely fair. All the competitors' names have been placed into a hat. As we pull the names, you will shoot in that order. In case of a tie, we will have a sudden death shoot-off. Welcome from all you visitors from foreign lands. I hope as you spend time in our great nation, you will get the sense of how precious our freedom is to us and the foundation this freedom rests upon. Our founding fathers recognized a certain self-evident and true that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We had to fight for our freedoms, but because we had faith in God in one hand, and the tools to obtain freedom in the other hand. And because we had men and women of faith and courage willing to sacrifice their very lives, we were successful. Now, take these seeds of freedom and spread them around the world that every man may be free. Johnny, thank you for that inspirational speech. Now, if everybody will hop on down to the edge of town, we'll get this competition started. Good morning, Montana, and thanks for helping me out today. Well, it's my pleasure, Dusty. Uh, you just show me what I need to be doing. Well, this new technology is actually very simple. Just talk into the can and hold it up to your ear to listen. Well, I'll be. What'll they think of next? Let's do a sound check. Boy, you know, I believe I can hear the ocean in there. Hey, fellas, on the air in three, two, one. Good morning to all you listeners out there. Welcome to this edition of the GSBN, the Gun Sports Broadcasting Network. We're coming to you today from Deadwood, South Dakota, where all the top long range shooters in the world have gathered, all vying for a chance to take home the golden gun. Joining me today in the broadcast booth is a legend in this sport. Montana, could you tell us a little history of the golden gun? What's your thing, Dusty? I want to thank you for inviting me today and what is undoubtedly going to be a very, very intense competition. Now the Golden Gun, it is the finest example 
of an 1873 Winchester rifle ever produced. I mean, it was chambered in a 4440 caliber and plated in 24 karat gold. It is a sight to behold. Thank you there, Montana. And now let's listen in as the competition is getting ready to begin. We have drawn names randomly out of a hat to decide the shooting order. First up will be Louisiana's own Sweet Tea. The range is yours, sir. That's Sweet Tea. He's a bit of an unknown and he has never had a victory on tour. If he could win here, he would automatically qualify for next year's Masters. Well, Dusty, he has chosen an 1886 lever action Winchester. Now that's an excellent rifle designed by a young man out of Utah named Browning, the rising star in gun design, and he has unlimited potential. Miss! One miss for Sweet Tea. That's not bad. He could place with a score like that. Next up, we want to introduce from Paris, France, Nun Fasteur. Sir. That's Monsieur Fasteur, a three-time European champion. He's most noted for his come-behind victory at the British Open just two years ago. Well, Dusty, he has chosen the simple but elegant Harrington and Richardson single-shot rifle. Now, that rifle was designed by Frank Wesson, brother of Dan Wesson of Smith & Wesson fame, and he's using a standard 4570 cartridge. Now, that's a good choice in this instance. Yeah. needs no introduction, a legend in his own mind and in his own time, Jose Wells, most noted for sending people on boat rides down the Rio Grande River. Well, he's chosen an 1885 high wall with a 4570 cartridge in it, and he is always one of the favorites to win this thing. Also, one miss for Jose Wells. I know he's not happy with that result. And now a word from one of our sponsors. Do you, like thousands of others, suffer from an embarrassed condition known as itchy trigger finger? Doggone this itchy trigger finger. Through medical science, Dr. Jackson's Magic Elixir has been proven to cure itchy trigger finger. Just place some of the Magic Elixir on the finger, take some orally by mouth, and in no time, you won't even remember which finger was itchy. Sold in traveling medicine shows across the U.S. Thank you. And we're back. A late entry with no tournament experience. We're not sure what to expect from Miss Scarlet. However, with her style and grace, she has already become the crowd favorite. Well, Leslie, her rifle of choice is an 1885 Winchester high wall in a 4570 caliber. Another John Browning design gun. <laughs> Mr. Winchester sure made a smart move when he hired that young man. 
Madame, the range is yours. our first contestant to hit all the targets. She set the mark high for all the other contestants. Joining me now in the booth is Miss Scarlett's assistant, Miss Annie. Thanks for joining us today, Miss Annie. And who is your little friend there? Well, thanks for having me, Dusty. This is my little friend, the golden pup. Oh, what a little doll. Tell us about yourself and Miss Scarlett. You two have quickly become our crowd favorites. Well, there's really not that much to tell. Um, Miss Scarlett was born on a farm, and she learned how to shoot at a very young age. She's never been in a match before, but she's holding her own out there. And just because she's called Miss doesn't mean she will. Wow. Not meaning to pry there, ma'am, but word around town is that you and Kangaroo Jim have hit it off really well. Well, I don't believe in love at first sight, but we'll see about second sight. He's a daisy. A daisy. You heard it here first, folks. Thanks you for joining us today with Miss Annie, and good luck to her and Miss Scarlett. Thank you, Dusty. Let's give a warm welcome to our next contestant, all the way from Mexico. Hola, Mexico Joe. He's the Mexican champion. He has a flair for the dramatic, as you can tell by the way he's dressed. And he's also chosen the 1886 Weaver Action Winchester. Yes. Yes. He had one miss, but don't you just love that mustache? Oh, wow. it's, a doozy. it's a doozy. One of our country's own service members from F Troop, Sergeant Agarn. The U.S. Cavalry Champion. Dusty, he's using the 1885 Winchester High Wall. Yeah. like the cavalry didn't come to the rescue that time. We'll be right back after work from our sponsors. If you've had a long day in a saddle, does your derriere require extra care? If so, I invite you to try Dr. Poindexter's ointment guaranteed to bring pain relief after a long day of move and beat. And now joining me in the booth to promote his new book, Crime Sprees for Dummies, Let's welcome Mr. Bad Bart. Uh, thanks, Dusty. You gotta speak into the can there, dummy. Hey, who you calling <laughs> dummy? <laughs> well, you did write the book. I guess you got me there. Tell us a little bit about your book there, Mr. Bart. Well, have you ever thought to yourself, there's gotta be a better way to make a living than working? If you have, this book is for you, and I'll tell you how to make crime pay. Uh, you're assuming that anyone interested in your book could read. Well, I hadn't thought about it that way. I suppose you can have somebody read it to you. <laughs> Maybe my probation officer. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, so I'll be on a book tour promoting my new book, Crime Sprees for Dummies. Stop by and get your own autographed copy. 
Thanks for stopping by, Mr. Bard, and good luck on the book tour. Thanks, Dusty. Have some candy. Yeah. Does your breath stink? Do your feet stink? Do skunks run away from you in fear? Then please, please, whatever you do, stay away from me. This has been a public service announcement. And now, from the land down under, he's a three-time world champion. He's always in contention to win it all, although he doesn't sound Australian to me. Well, he has chosen the rifle he is famous for, and that is the Sharps. That's a gun designed by Christian Sharps many, many years ago. Now, it is still the go-to gun for long-range shooting. With double-set triggers, a 34-inch barrel, and a tang flip-up sight. Now, this rifle can, re rifle can reach out and touch anything you set its sights on. If he gets it sighted incorrectly, there is no doubt in my mind this boy will win this competition. From the land down under, presenting Kangaroo Jim. That's a perfect score for Kangaroo Jim. Now presenting from Minot, North Dakota, Dollar Bill. He's got his mind on the money and the money on his mind. Well, the Sharps rifle and 4570 is his choice for this distance testing. Miss. I uh, miss. Looks like he won't be taking home the golden gun. A warm Deadwood welcome to Klaus von Schutter from Germany. You're up, sir. He's from a rigid military background, and he's a veteran of the European tour. Well, Bestie, he's also chosen the Sharps rifle. Ah, a miss. His lederhosen must have been just a mite too tight. That's no good. All the way from the far east, long range shooter, China's best, Xing Pao Ping. And he makes a dog good egg roll, too. Montana, he's the Chinese champion for four years running. Oops. <laughs> Looks like there was a pal, but no ping. Oh. Well, that does it, folks. After an exciting day of shooting and over 30 contestants, we have a tie between Miss Scarlet and Kangaroo Jim. Yeah, tomorrow morning, they're going to compete in the sudden death shoot-off to determine the winner. So join us back here in the morning for live coverage of this exciting event. Thank you and good night. Sure was nice for Boss to do this for us. But what's a buffet? I think it's a French word that means fat, greasy food. All right, Miss Kathy, you have to be at work by nine. Hold on, men. There's enough for everyone. One at a time, please. Next. Hands up, son. Hands up. I'll take this. Take them away, Sheriff. Miss Get them all. We'll take them all to jail. Hands up, son. You're under arrest. Hands up. I'll take this. Make it snow, I've got him. Welcome back, folks. Thank you for joining us again today for what promises to be a great matchup between Miss Scarlet and Kangaroo Jim. Dusty, as you know, under sudden death rules, the first contestant to miss will be eliminated. And now let's join the action as they determine the shooting order. For this part of the competition, we have moved the target down range 800 yards. So, if we'll have Kangaroo Jim and Miss Scarlet step up, we'll decide who shoots first by coin toss. Miss Scarlet, you make the call, heads or tails? Heads. I'm sorry, it's tails. So, you have to shoot first. Well, the pressure is tremendous in these sudden death scenarios, and here's where all your training comes into play. 
It looks like Miss Scarlett is coming to the line. Let's listen in. Miss Scarlett, the range is yours. Oh, Miss Annie, I hope I can do this. I've never made a shot this far before. Miss Scarlett, you can do it. Just trust your sights. Take your time. Oh, here we go. Good luck. It's a hit! She did it! It's a hit! Now all the pressure is on Kangaroo Jim. Well, he's been in these situations before. I doubt there's anything that could rattle his nerves. Let's get back to the action. Miss Scarlet has hit her target. Next up in the sudden death shootout, Kangaroo Jim. The range is yours. You're the man! Hit that target! He's coming to the line now. Yeah, and he's got his game face on. Absolutely nothing can distract him from the target. Kangaroo Jim, Kangaroo Jim, good luck. Miss! Wow, what a rookie mistake. It's a classic case of premature trigger pull. Oh. And congratulations to Miss Scarlett, the winner of the Golden Gun. We will make an official presentation of the gun in my office in one hour. Miss Scarlett, everyone. That's it, folks. Miss Scarlett is your winner. Thank you for joining us today, and be sure to join us next week when we'll be coming to you from Denver, Colorado. Until then, set your sights on the important things in life and squeeze that trigger. Well, Mr. Bart, it looks like somebody just stole some of your baby candy. Uh, Miss Scarlett, uh, you're a mite bit early, aren't you? I think I'm right on time. I should have known, Mr. Bart, that you were going to run off with the money and the golden gun. I'm placing you under arrest. I work for the United States Secret Service. I've already arrested all of your men, so don't bother trying to call for help. Excuse me, Miss Scarlett. Put the gun down, please. <laughs> Great work, Shorty. Your performance review is looking better by the minute. Thanks, boss. Well, I overslept, and then I missed the free breakfast buffet. And then I couldn't find any other men. So, the old breakfast buffet trick. Oldest trick in the book. Now, Shorty, take Miss Scarlett to the stagecoach. We'll take it out of town across the bridge. I've loaded the bridge with explosives just in case our plan doesn't go as planned. And once we cross that bridge, we'll light the fuses and they'll never be able to catch us. <laughs> Annie, call for help. Get help. trapped in your present relationship and you want to be free so you can be with me. Yes, oh, yes, no. that's it. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. oh, I almost forgot. They've taken Miss Scarlet. They've taken the money and the golden gun and they've rigged the bridge with explosives. They're going to blow it up once they get across. Listen, if they get across that bridge and they blow it, everything's gone. We'll never catch them. Scarlet, bad Bart, the money, gun, everything's gone. Well, listen, I've got an idea. That bridge is just within range of our rifles. One good shot, we can blow that bridge up before they cross it. 
You up for it, Kangaroo Jim? I'm sorry. I've come down with an itchy trigger finger. Oh, no. Lies are not what they used to be. And I'll be honest with you, I really don't know who we can trust around here. Listen, I'll try it. I'm a U.S. Secret Service agent, and you can absolutely trust me. I'm a shooter, but I am not a long-range shooter, Montana. Well, don't you worry about it. I'll coach you through it. You go get Miss Scarlett's gun, and we'll go get up on that balcony and get in position. Sounds like a plan. Jordy, you drive, and I'll attend to Miss Scarlett. Will do, boss. Now, Miss Scarlett, if you'll kindly get in, we'll get this show on the road. You know you'll never get away with this bad Bart. Oh, I'll get away with it. See chapter six, how to get away with it. Get a move on, shorty. What's the hold up? Sorry, boss. Just waiting for this chicken to get across the road. What? No, boss. We need to know why. Oh, he's across. Giddy up, yeah. Miss Scarlett, we're not gonna touch a hair on your pretty head. In fact, I have a business proposal for you. With your good looks and shooting skills, plus my brains, we can set up shooting competitions around the world. A regular dream team, if you will. Your dream sounds like a nightmare to me. I see the explosion. Just beneath that center beam. All right, Montana. I got it. I got it. I see you. You listen to what I tell you. You set the sights 1,200 yards. Take it like a leaf, Montana. I don't know if I can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Take a few deep breaths. Let your heart slow down. Clear your mind. What are you happy for? John? John. John, listen to me. You can do this. Use the scarlet bullet. Come on back. It's time to come back to it. Hurry, Shorty! Get across that bridge! We're almost there, boss! Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Don't rush your shot. You ready? Slowly exhale, wait for a heartbeat, slowly your book say now, Mr. Baby Candy Stealer? It says, the end, you big dummy. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Sheriff, round up some men and go escort that stagecoach back to town. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boss. Seems like your plan didn't make any dollars or any sense either. You're right, Shorty. No sense at all. But at least we got plenty of baby candy. Sheriff, hand me that bowl. Bad Bart, you should know crime doesn't pay. Miss Scarlett, Agent Smith, the President sends his congratulations on a job very well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ms. Scarlett, you are hereby promoted to a full-fledged field agent of the U.S. Secret Service. Agent Smith, I want you to start training Ms. Scarlett immediately. Do you think you can handle that? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to love this job.
been known to steal candy from a baby. How could that be? Duh! <laughs> Are you help? Help! Help! Cut! Cut! <laughs> <laughs> Action. Oh no, she's lost her voice. Why is everybody she's trying to say what? something? What? Act it out, Miss Scar Miss Annie, make it out. You screwed up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have that over anyway. Well there's one for the blooper reel. <laughs> That kangaroo Jim sure can jump to conclusions. Oh, you can say that again. Wow, that kangaroo Jim sure can jump to conclusions. Yeah! I trust your accommodations was satisfactory? Satisfactory. Hold up. I need my bra all over. Man, Mark, you should know crime doesn't pay. Cut. It's a breathing. It's a breathing. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. I hear everything. Yeah. Well, I got you. Action. Pure solid silver. Wow. We are done with vampires. Is this customer service? I'd like to register a complaint about a bad movie. I've just wasted my time watching. All of our representatives are busy. Your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line. I don't think so.